Welcome you all in morning Sahaja Jiva Collective Meditation. Let's go down to Shimata Ji's Lotus Feet to Bandhan Vais Kundalini and Pita Bandhan. <laughs> Thank 
Let's surrender ourselves at Shumataji's lotus feet and seek permission to do today's meditation. Shumataji, please give us permission to do today's meditation. Open both hands in front of Madhu. We all faith in our heart. Right hand to left heart. We request Mother, Mother, please come in my heart. To please be here in my heart. Mother, please establish your lotus feet in my heart. Mother, please let me worship your lotus feet in my heart. Please make my heart pure and please be here in my heart. Put hands on left. Request mother. Mother, please come in my brain. Mother, please come in my thoughts. Please come in my attention and enlighten my attention. I request Mother Kundalini, please arise, arise, arise within me. My attention is on top of my head. Put hand on lap and we say Shri Adi Bhumi Devi Mantra once. Oh, Tame the Sacha Shri Adi Bhumi Devi Sacha Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namaha. Shri Ganesha Mantra once. Om Shri Ganesha Sakshat Shri Yati Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namaha Request Mother, Shri Mataji, please come in my Muladhara in the form of Shri Ganesha. Mother, please help us clear and enlighten our Muladhara. Please give us wisdom, innocence, purity, auspicious night lies, Sri Ganesha. Left hand towards mother and right hand on the ground. Sri Nirmal Ganesha Mantra. 
साक्षात श्री निर्मो गणेशा साक्षात श्री आदिशक्ति माता जी श्री निर्मला देवे नम नम प्योर ग्राइस आई एम इनोसेंट both hands on lap the tension on the center of the thigh and we say shri ganesh gauri om swami sakshat shri ganesh gauri sakshat shri adi shakti mata ji मदर प्लीज मेक मी इनोसेंट left hand on the ground and right hands towards mother she kartikey mantra om tane va sakya श्री कार्तिकेय साक्षात श्री आदि शक्ति माता जी श्री नर्मदा देवी नम नम मदर प्लीज मेक मी वर्दी ऑफ योर लव योर अटेंशन द प्लीज मेक मी वर्दी ऑफ यू सर्व राक्षस मंत्र साक्षात सर्व राक्षस हंत्रे साक्षात श्री आदि शक्ति माता जी श्री नर्मला देवे नम नम प्लीज रिमूव ऑल द नेगेटिविटीज विद इन यू प्लीज डिस्ट्रॉय ऑल द नेगेटिविटी make me clean your बहुत 
The food, how to nourish yourself, how to look after yourself. The second seeking later on starts, some of the animals start becoming more alert by understanding that you have to be more intelligent. So they start seeking uh, in power. They want to empower other animals and try to overcome them so that they can eat them. So they seek in power. Then the seeking goes even subtler and subtler that they start seeking in money. As in human beings start seeking in money, in possessions and things. Animals don't have possessions, thank God. Because possessions means headache. You have to have insurance, you have to have this, you have to have that. So the human beings start getting the possessions and all these things, and they start going into the seeking. But the last and foremost seeking is of the very evolved is the seeking of the spirit, the seeking of God. This is the real thing that should happen to us when you are at that point, at that point of maturity, then this happening takes place. Now, the other center that is coming out of that one is, I think it's not shown here, but it comes out of that, is the center called as Upadishthana. It's the center by which you think, you organize for the future, you think. You organize for the future. You work out your action through it. Like we think, 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 think. All the time what we do is nothing but think. I mean, planning is such a curse that we don't do anything about it. We just plan and keep it in the book. Or we have planned it. They think we have planned it. It's done already. It's not so. Now this thinking gives us a realm of future into which we enter. When we start thinking, we do not know how we imbalance ourselves. In this area, this area resides the principle of the primordial master, as Gregor has told you. Now, when you start thinking, this center, the one you see, the yellow colored center, transform the fat from your stomach for the use of your brain. Now, people are so much against fat these days that it would be really dangerous to talk for it. <laughs> now, from where are you to get the replacement of your brain cells? Tell me, if you are not going to consume any fat. As it is, your livers are out. So whatever fat you take, you take any amount of fat, you will not have any weight. Try. Because that fat is the reserve for your brain, which thinks all the time. 
you have to you know do you know that this brain is made of factors do you know this or not is nothing but factors in sanskrit is called as meda and the whole thing is called as meda even the brain even your nerves are made of the factors now when you don't take it, any form of fact any form of fact whatsoever i mean i'm told that lots of uh, butter is lying here with i don't say when i say i don't say you ate the mountain of it no no what i'm saying if you don't take at all then what you do is to make your body starve for the fat that is needed for one of the purposes is the brain and for your nerves if you don't take fat in the body you will be a nervous person what is the supplement for your nerves what are you going to supply that's why you find it is mostly to make it out and western or an indian is very easy you make them start before any calamity all right the indian would be silent be watching the another would be going into complete this ha oh, everything will be coming up or the eyes will be twisting the nose will be going up and down the ears will be going like that they'll be all now the reason is your nerves do not have any sustenance in them that loss because you just don't take it take little bit not i'm not saying the mountain you see if i say something you may jump into the mountain of uh, of fat that's not the point but just to avoid completely the fat is a wrong idea create an imbalance now this core center has to do double job firstly it has to supply the fat to the brain secondly it has to look after your liver on the right hand side when it moves to the left hand side your pancreas your spleen your kidneys and it can you imagine all these things this poor thing has to do now if you are thinking 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 all the time then it is trying to find out all the fat fat bubbles it can get from everywhere to supply it in the brain all right and if it does not get that then it is a dangerous thing but even if it gets it then it is creating a problem for the other organs which it has to look after that's how people get diabetes you don't get diabetes because you eat sugar is a wrong idea also. i don't know from why the doctors have started this kind of thing for example in india people take sugar at least half a kilo of sugar per day in the village at least minimum they eat more sugar than they eat fat they keep fat but nobody has diabetes why because they don't think <laughs> whatever sugar they take is used for their liver now if you do not give your liver any sugar now ask anyone how the liver acts liver is the one that takes out all your poison now this poison is to be taken out of the liver by what now if you take the water and drink on top of that what happens that the hydrogen becomes heavier i mean this h3 added to it and the whole system of h2o which has to be neutral becomes like this and you can't receive any heat so the whole heat which is the poison has to be leaked in the liver you get all kinds of liver problems all kinds of liver problems practically most of the western people have liver problem but they don't know it till they discover till they are absolutely on the verge of something very fatal they do not discover about it now this hydrogen which pulls it down becomes like an arrow doesn't receive anything from the liver the heat and the, such a person never gets cancer even cancer at same day. in cancer also the h goes down very much so it's a left sided problem which i'll tell you but same thing happens that the heat of the body cannot be taken out by water so the water becomes a heavy water we can say but after realization the hydrogen goes up like that and you receive all the heat and people who have bad liver feel terrible heat of the right hand side now you have to take carbohydrate to neutralize that you have to take carbohydrate uh, if you don't like sugar eat rice i mean if there's some sort of a 
thing on your head. This also is an enterprise. I must tell you, these food stores are also another enterprise, which is very, very subtle. Very subtle enterprise. You see, as you had other enterprises of gurus, when you had a holiday, you see, some idea must have come. Then these hip, what you were there? Singers, musicians, were there four of them? Beatles. You know, the one who created them, Beatles, his uncle has told me the story how he did. It was all maneuvering to begin with. And that maneuvering made people mad. And so that madness is still on. It's, 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 on. It's, it's all auto-suggestion and all those things. They work it out. They're psychologists, you see. And they know how to maneuver people and how to dominate. They know. And they manage it. They work it out on your weaknesses, like you do not know about food. Now, some of the health food I ate, it was not for human beings. It was for buffaloes, I said. <laughs> really? Some of the foods were so hard and so harsh. I got such a pain in my stomach. I said, no, this is not for human beings. This is for buffaloes. You are not buffaloes. You are human beings. You have to eat food which is digestible to your stomach. Of course, that doesn't mean you should use, use this white bread. Of course, that is not the thing, which makes your uh, liver completely sort of, or you can say the intestine sluggish. But you should not eat all the fodder of such a hard thing, like everything you cut, because you want to preserve the vitamins, you will cut everything and eat everything like that. Japanese are the worst. Japanese are the worst. I mean, there's nothing that they don't eat. They eat everything that is. I mean, you can't eat the food the way they eat. First thing they served me, and a, a very special banquet where the princess was there and all, was a shell with all these moss around. It. For us Indians, as it is, we are a little fussy about this. <laughs> and my daughter said that. I said, what is in there? It says, say, live. I said, live? We were all trying to know what is live. They said, now oyster or something is live inside. And they poked it and it started going like that. He said, oh God, how do you eat it? And the Japanese just twisted it down and ate it off, you see. And they eat everything raw. There was a boy who was eating peanuts. They asked him, what are you eating? He said, I'm eating these uh, prawns. He was just peeling them out and eating them. Can you imagine? This is the way they eat their food, which is not meant for the human body. You have to cook, but your women are so busy, busy with liberation, they don't cook. They don't cook. You should learn to cook to handle your husband. You see, if you know how to cook, it's very simple. <laughs> In our Sahaja Yoga Center, we teach them how to cook. Because if you know cook, you're the master. You see, people are, men are really so simple. I mean, really so simple. <laughs> I cook very well. I'm an excellent cook, I should say. But a gentleman came to see me. He was a German, and he told me that there was one chairman of a company that he told me, if you want to eat the best chicken, ask Mrs. Srivastava to cook her. That's my another name. And she's an excellent cook. I was surprised I had this reputation all over that I cook so well. It was chicken. And he came all the way, you see, and he brought the chicken with him. And he came all the way to cook with me and to eat it. And he was a very big man also himself. I was amazed, you see, that just to learn how to cook the chicken. He said, my wife doesn't know how. Just to learn how helpless he was. All men are helpless as far as food is concerned. If you give them good food, you see, they may say, oh, we can eat whatever we want. But it's not so. If you know their taste and things, and if you know how to handle them, it's very easy to handle. Like somebody told me, Indian men are very great cowards. I said, why? Because they don't know how to cook, that's why they don't devote. It's imagine to say such a thing. It's not that. They're very wise. What's this of changing every day a wife? You see? One wife, is, she knows all about your habits. She knows everything. She knows how to cook for you. It's a good idea. We carry on very well as companions. Every time if you change, God knows she may come as a shrew, she may come as anything. You may lose your head with somebody, another may break your hand, another may break your leg. It's better to know one and handle her for this lifetime. So next time at least you don't face that time. It's very simple and wise way of living together to understand that in one lifetime only, if you live with one person, you develop that love, that attention, that understanding, because human beings basically are very If you live with somebody, for two days, you will just see the superficial things of that person. That may not be good. So to get to the depth of a person, it's necessary you live with that person 
with a loving care, you see that person and you will discover how beautiful that person is. He's so beautiful sometimes that you're surprised. The other day, I had to go for something to a hospital. I mean, I never go to a hospital, but something happened and doctors said, after my life, you must do this, you must do that. And my husband didn't see that. He was so upset. He had never seen me like that. So he went back to his office. He put his head like this and he was sitting there, didn't do any work and anything. When he came back, I was angry with him. I said, what do you mean by not being here? I was here and there were other people. And But actually, I knew what he was doing. So I went and told him, I know you ran away, you coward. You couldn't stand there. <laughs> he said, it's true. You know, I couldn't see it. And then he texted, he told me, oh, boy, he was horrid. He wouldn't talk to me. He wouldn't allow me to do anything. That's what happened. So to understand, Emma, it's such a great thing to love. I don't know if you realize that. It's such a great thing to love, to give. It's much greater than to have. Giving, I don't know if you have tried or not. All my life, I've done nothing but giving. And I think I feel so happy about it. The re real source of happiness lies in giving, not in taking. It's such a great thing to give. Give, give, give. And you'd be amazed here, you have no dress of it. That is what one has to understand. But to think about what things I should preserve, what things I should give, what is there to think? If somebody likes to have it, yes. it works out. Now, the second uh, center is also of the Lakshmi Center. Because Silent meditation for two minutes.
Mataji for giving this invaluable knowledge and beautiful state which was not ever possible without your grace. Let's do collective bandhan. Nirmala, Nirmala, Nitya Dhan Tera Jo Kiye Rogo Se Vimuk Huye, Nitya Dhan Tera Jo Kiye Rogo Se Vimuk Huye, Tu 
है धनवंतरी तमा तू है धनवंतरी तमा ये सुषमा तम पिता Thank you everyone. I wish you all to have a very beautiful and blessed day. Jai Shri Mataji.